Hey everybody, welcome back to the Monday Night Wars. Brett Mix here. We look at the WWF side this week and we review this in under 10 minutes. As always, hit like and subscribe if you're enjoying these reviews. Going back to the Monday Night Wars. Plus, you can check these reviews. I archive them by year and by company. So whenever you want to relive the Monday Night Wars, they're in my channel. So stay subscribed and notified for that. Raw Week 89. The Raw rating got a 2.5 this week while Nitro got a 3.3. Uh, they scored their third straight 3.3, Nitro did, whereas Raw went up 0.1 from last week. So WCW wins now for the 52nd week in a row by a total of 0.8 viewers this week. So now after this week's loss, the total scoreboard for WWF is 17 wins, 70 losses, and 2 draws through the 89 weeks of the Monday Night War. So that's 17 wins, 70, 70 losses, and two draws against WCW in these 89 weeks. It went on Monday Night Raw, went on June the 30th, 1997 on the USA Network from the Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Des Moines, Iowa. This was the go-home show to Kinder House Canadian Stampede that would take place from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Raw was live on TSN in Canada at the time as well. We first see a Paul Bear Undertaker video package because tonight Paul Bear is going to unlock, unlock the story, unleash the story, I was trying to say, to everybody about The Undertaker and what happened with his family. Vince McMahon, Jerry the King Lawler, and Jim Ross are on commentary. We open up with the Thorn in Your Eye video package. McMahon says, only the WWF fans are this loud and there are more signs in the crowd lately. And that's just a trend that just gets bigger and bigger as the Attitude Era goes on. Ken Shamrock opened up the show, his entrance did, because the match opened up instead of a promo. It was Ken Shamrock versus the new King of the Ring, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, who had China but in his ring at ringside. Shamrock opens the show, and he comes in and rolls with Triple H with an arm bar and a leg lock. He tries to get him down on the mat. Helmsley came back with counter holds. Helmsley with a snap mare and a knee drop. China then throws Shamrock into the steps on the outside. Helmsley in control until Mankind walks down the ramp, and Shamrock with a belly-to-belly. -belly. Shamrock beats Hunter as Helmsley as she was distracted by Mankind after Foley managed to interfere of sorts. Shamrock wins at 441. He had the match a star and a half. Michael Cole does his first ever interview with the WWF in the LOD backstage. He's young and very nervous, but he did a decent job. He didn't stutter. He didn't do anything like that. Uh, the Nation, uh, and I should mention, Mankind takes on Helmsley at the pay-per-view, so that's why Mankind uh, interfered in Helmsley's match. The Nation, the new Nation, D'Lo and Farouk with Kama, take on LOD in a tournament semifinals match. They run an Ahmed joining the Nation promo video package, and Ahmed has got hurt last week in the attack from the nation uh and he tore something a ligament in his leg so he's going to be out for some time ahmed always had injury troubles road warrior it's not like anyone missed him though road warrior animal held delo up for hawk who hit doomsday device then henry with the slop bucket came in and interfered fruit covers hawk for the pinfall at 302 the nation go on to the finals as they beat as the godwins helped out then beating the legion of doom so the nation goes on to the tag team tournament finals. Farouk calls Vince McMahon in the ring, and McMahon gets in there and says, you know why Vader's the number one contender for this Sunday against The Undertaker? Because he's a white man. D'Lo tells Vince to shut up. Big big talk for a rookie. Tell Vince to shut up, and he says that a black man should be going up against Undertaker for the title. Savio Vega then comes to the ramp, and he gets a surprisingly decent pop as he was a heel just a few weeks ago in the nation, and he was never a good face. But he comes about with his own member of the gang, own gang members, I should say. Uh, they all came out, and they all started brawling with the nation. Then the DOA came out, the Disciples of Apocalypse, on their bikes. All three stables go at it, and there's just uh, nonstop action in the ring as all these three groups just keep going at it as they make their debut to the Los Brequas. Brian Christopher took on I, the legend and Hall of Famer, not the legend, but a Hall of Famer, Ivan Putzky, his son, Scott Putzky, in a light heavyweight division. The light heavyweight division, the name of the cruiserweight division, WCW, was such a hit, such a success, so they did it here. The great Sasuke would, or great Suzuki, would take on the debuting Taka Mishinoku at Canadian Stampede, which was this Sunday. They make reference to him being Lawler's son again, but Christopher wins at 3.37 after Jerry the King Lawler got involved. Putsky dropped him after the match until the King dropped him. Star and a half for that. 
an emotional undertaker is backstage saying he hopes these creatures of the night can listen to him and forgive him and let him tell his side of the story after Paul Bear is done spewing the garbage. Next up, Brian Pillman took on Mankind, who is moreover. Both guys went at it, but Triple H in China this time for revenge came out the top of the ramp. Pillman took a bite out of Mankind, and JR says he's like Tyson. They go over how Pillman got fired from Shotgun Saturday night for his controversial comments. Triple H tried to enter as Mankind knocked him off the apron. Pillman took his boot off and leveled Mankind. Triple H hit Pillman with a chair by accident when going for Mankind. Pillman wins by countout at 9.02. It was a wild one. I gave it a star and three quarters. Paul Bear then came out to tell the Undertaker's secret. He talks about a story where there were two kids, a red-haired kid and a little brother named Kane. Bear said Taker has the red-haired punk and his father taught him everything he knows as a mortician. Everything Taker was fine and Kane looked up to the Undertaker, the red-headed kid. There's more to this story, a bunch of things about that shouldn't be happening about the barn, smoking cigarettes, the fans pop at that, which is weird. He says one day went went to school, came back, and there was fire trucks everywhere. Taker was her, hiding in the bushes, and Paul Bear says, Undertaker, you murdered them. You're a goddamn murderer, he says. Vader backstage consoles Pear and says he did the right thing. Owen and the Bulldog beat the Headbangers next in a match, uh, in a tag team tournament match that leads them to the finals against the nation eventually. Uh, Bulldog and Owen uh, get the win, but it was after uh, Inside Cradle as Owen Hart rolled him up after the Bulldog pinned Thrasher, or took Thrasher out of the ring, and Owen rolled him up for the pinfall win. Brett on the phone from Calgary he says he's in God's country, but he, he wasn't actually. We'd find that out a little bit later. Um, I gave that tag match two stars and a quarter. Cornette then introduces two huge men that look like the old SWAT team, and they, bra- and they brawl, and they go to the outside. Then Undertaker does this d- dramatic promo where he does a really good job acting. He tells his side of the story. He, Taker says he figured he knew what would happen, the fact that he ran to the door. The firefighters grabbed him and held him back. He was restrained and watched from the funeral home. His father and mother and his, and his little brother came. He said he watched his home burn to the ground, and he has to live with this every day of his life. And then he said that he had to go see his mother's corpse after she was burned and she was the most wonderful woman. Taker does a good job at selling the story here. I knew Bear would be a good job acting, but Taker did a good job too. You could tell they taped the interview before to make sure Taker did a good job, which he did. Vader with Paul Bear took on Rockabilly and ended in no contest because Undertaker, uh, Vader came down with Paul Bear and uh, Vader was in the ring, obviously. He didn't come down. But he was out there with Paul Bear. Undertaker slapped Bear around and Vader. And Paul Bear got on the microphone calling him a murderer. And then he said, Kane is alive. Your brother Kane is alive. Undertaker was in shock. And that was the whole point of the segment match that got no rating. That Kane is alive and Undertaker is shocked. So Undertaker is shocked that Kane's alive, as Bear says. Main event was Stone Cold versus the Anvil. Anvil came out first. Stone Cold got a great pop when he came out. He looked beyond cool at this point. He just threw his tag title down and posed on the top turnbuckle, and everyone cheered. They don't cheer so much when the glass hits. But they cheer when Austin hits the turnbuckle for his pose. That's when they cheer in 1997. But as we go into 98, they cheer more for when he the glass hits. Jawbreaker to the anvil. Austin wins at DQ at 10:22. We all know how this ended because the Heart Foundation came up. But what the surprise was is that Brett came out. He wasn't in Calgary. Brett then stomps on Austin to end the show. Mankind had a. Ma- I gave the Austin Nightheart match a star. To end the show, Mankind had a mandible claw on Brett, and then Owen and Pillman dropped Mankind off. The show goes off the air this way, with all them brawling on the road to Canadian Stampede. I gave this show a quality rating of 6.5 out of 10. Because the fact that this show was helped by the fact that it had Austin back on it, as they didn't last week. Star Power was better on this episode than last week's. Let's get through this one feeling. It also had the whole storyline with Bear and Taker giving great promos, both of them. to the relevate, And the revelation that Kane was still alive. The Heart Foundation carried the show in a lot of segments. Uh, but there was good character work like Bay McFoley and, uh, and many others. It was a good go-home show to Canadian Stampede. So again, after 89 weeks, Raw has 17 wins in the Monday Night Wars against WCW. 70 losses. So that's 17 wins, 1-7. 70 losses, 7-0, and two draws. They're not doing good, but they're still getting better in the ratings. They're hovering around 2.4, 2.5. So that's it for this week's Raw. 6.5 quality rating out of 10. 
Hit like and subscribe if you're enjoying these reviews. I'll be with you for another one soon. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.